let's set a close-up camera on the pillows. To do so, instead of creating a new camera from scratch, I will select the one we set over the left nightstand. So I will select both the camera and the target. I will hold the shift key and drag and so I create a clone of the existing camera. And I will choose copy. Let's see the point of view of this camera. And let's also elevate it. Cool. I'm mainly focusing on the pillows because I want you to understand the new techniques we will see now. I usually get my maps from textures.com. So let's do it together. Go to textures.com and click on the PBR materials. And for our example, let's choose a leather. So let's click on the fabrics, leather and paper. And let's pick the padded leather. I want you to scroll down, go to the albedo, which is the diffuse map, and click here to download it. Then go to the height and do the same. And to the normal map. Open the material editor, create a new gray material. Assign it to this pillow and apply the diffuse map we just downloaded. Enable the associated material in viewport so that we can see the texture in the camera's viewport. Let's produce a render to see how it looks. This is okay, but it's not realistic, meaning that it doesn't give us the feeling that this texture is three-dimensional, that this is a padded pillow. So this is when we need to add a bump map. Open the Material Editor, right click, go Maps, V-Ray, V-Ray Bitmap, and select the height map we downloaded earlier and connect it to the bump map. Produce another render. There is a slight difference, but I want to make the effect more bold. So I will go to the V-Ray Material Settings, scroll down to find the Maps rollout, and the bump by default is set to 30%. I will make it 100% to make the effect stronger and do one more render. Can you see the difference now? It immediately gives us the feeling that this surface is indeed padded. It has bumps and it doesn't look anymore like a wallpaper as before. Play around with the bump percentage depending on how strong you want the effect to be. So, how does a bump map work? Bump creates the illusion of depth on our surface. We use grayscale images and the parts of the image that are bright towards white, they get pulled out of the surface. And the parts of the image that are dark towards black get pushed into the surface and that's how we get the illusion of depth. Let's now see the normal maps. Go to the material editor and disconnect the bump map. Right click in the material editor, go maps, V-Ray, V-Ray normal map and connect it to the bump map. Then, right click again and go Maps V-Ray V-Ray Bitmap and select the normal map we downloaded earlier and connect it to the normal map. 
Let's produce a render to see how it looks. The result we get is actually pretty similar to the one we got with the bump map. How does a normal map work? Normal is a newer and let's say more improved type of bump. In this method, the bumps we get are not real as well and the main difference is that a normal map uses RGB information and not grayscale. This makes it harder, at least for me, to create them in Photoshop, so when I don't find this texture online along with my diffuse map, I prefer to use a bump map, since it's way easier for me to make a grayscale image from the diffuse map. And now let's see the displacement map. Go to the material editor and disconnect the bump map. Connect the height map we used earlier in bump to the displacement. The displacement effect is usually pretty strong, so I advise you to start with a value of 2 to 5%. Let's try 5 and produce a render. As its name implies, these type of maps physically displace the surface to which they are applied, so they are usually altering the geometry of the surface. And like a bump map, a displacement map consists of grayscale values. Be careful in displacement not to use high values. Let me try 100 for instance, which was the default value. You can see now that the surface gets distorted. As I said earlier, I usually play with values between 2 and 5. From personal experience, I use bump and normal maps when I have a good surface or fabrics and in general in surfaces where the extrusion is light, while I use displacement maps when the extrusion is stronger, like a brick wall, concrete or roof tiles, for instance.